out below us is America, a land rich in resources and industrial might. But America is also a land of enormous distances, where hundreds of miles may separate the resources from the industries which refine them, and from the people who will eventually use them. Our transportation systems are like arteries, through which the lifeblood of the nation surges, as raw materials, finished products, and people move across the land over gleaming ribbons of rail, over rivers, lakes, and oceans, and over endless networks of highways. But rising above all the earthbound carriers is the newest and fastest growing form, transportation by air. Transportation that rises above the congestion which so often slows up traffic on the ground. Transportation that can move with equal ease and swiftness over any terrain, land or sea. Transportation that can usually continue in spite of hazardous weather on the ground. Or with radar to guide them, planes take off through rain or fog and go up where weather is unimportant riding calm and serene above the storms below. Air transportation has certain advantages over all other ways of carrying people and products, and one of those advantages is the directness of its routes. Just compare the distance between two points, Chicago and Los Angeles, by overland route and by air. The overland route goes far out of the way because it must make connections between many different cities. But the airline route goes straight from one point to another in a direct line to the destination. This directness of route coupled with advances in aviation engineering means speed, a speed never before dreamed of in any other form of transportation. And the speed of transportation by air means that we no longer need to measure distance in miles. Now we measure distance in time. How far is it to St. Louis? It may be many miles, and yet you can take off from any place in the United States and within minutes or hours at the most be swinging toward the landing ramps in St. Louis. All across the country, on regular schedules around the clock, Gleaming giants skim down the runways and take to the air, carrying, in some cases, more passengers than all three of Christopher Columbus's ships put together, plus enough baggage and freight to fill one of the largest trucks on the road. As each scheduled flight gets underway, another is poised on the runway, ready for takeoff. Another flight, headed for some other point on the compass, plane after plane, accounting daily for thousands of passengers and tons of cargo. To understand why its speed makes air transportation so important to the nation and to the world, we need only examine the variety of cargo that goes into the typical flight. In almost every case, a part of the payload is made up of United States mail. These double lock pouches contain hundreds of important letters and packages each of which must get to its destination quickly, and that means via air mail. If our scheduled airlines carried nothing else except mail, their contribution to our way of life would still be enormous, for air mail is the most economical form of rapid communication. Air mail means that a businessman who runs low on merchandise can order it by air mail one day, and the manufacturer can receive the order the next so that the goods can be shipped immediately by air transport. Air mail means that friends and families can keep in close touch, no matter how great the distance is between them. With air mail, Johnny in Spokane and his grandmother in Atlanta are only hours apart. But our airlines transport many other articles besides mail, and in most cases, speed of delivery is the primary reason for using air transportation. Perishable products such as flowers and many foods become worthless unless rushed to market, and only air transportation can guarantee long-distance delivery of such perishables within hours.
But it isn't just perishables which make use of air deliveries. This construction crane is out of operation because of a broken part. A building project will be shut down unless the machine is repaired. While mechanics get ready to make the repair, the contractor makes a quick call to the manufacturer of the broken part, ordering a new one for replacement. And because the part can be shipped by air freight, because it can be received in a matter of hours, the crane can be fixed without delay. The construction project will be resumed in plenty of time to meet the contractor's schedule. In hundreds of such cases, transportation by air has benefited American industry. The air freight services are vital in transporting mail, perishable products, and rush orders to places within our country and around the world. Yet nowhere has air transportation found such wholehearted approval as it has with the people who fly. Airline passengers quite often are businessmen, all the way from newly hired salesmen to top industrial leaders. Or the passengers may be officials of organizations or governments. Transportation by air gets such men quickly to important meetings, which may affect our relationships with nations all over the world. Meetings in Washington, in the diplomatic circles of Paris, or in the Far East. But many who fly do so because it is a thrilling as well as convenient way to travel. This vacationing family looks forward to several weeks of fun, and no small part of the fun is riding on a ship of the skies. Hurry now, for whether it's a first flight or something you've done before, there is always a sense of excitement saying hello to the purser as you go up the ramp. Greeting the stewardess who will be at your service during the flight. Settling yourself by the window with your seat belt in place, looking around at the other passengers and listening as the engines roar up to full throttle. And then there's the takeoff and you're in the air. The long runways unreal beneath you like a giant pattern on a mile-sized checkerboard. And you begin to climb higher, higher, higher above arched bridges on the curving river, above the spires of stone and steel that make up the city, into the wide open freeway of the skies. Exciting? You bet it's exciting. The purring of propellers seems to spin away the miles to vacation land. Whether you're off to a mountain resort in our own country, or flying between the blue of the sky and the blue of the sea, on your way to visit in far off Venice. Yet the conquest of distance and time already achieved by conventional engines is even now being bettered by the powerful thrust of jets, rapidly approaching the speed of sound. Today's jet airliners are roaring toward a new epoch of transportation by air. But scheduled airliners are not alone in adding a new chapter of speed and convenience to the story of transportation. The helicopter spells convenience up, down, forward, and standing still. This versatile craft can give you a bird's eye view of the world's wonders, hovering while you have time for a good look. A helicopter comes in almost straight down at the airport, not interfering with runway traffic. While it brings mail, it is picked up from the roof of the post office. Because the helicopter can stand still in the air, it is indispensable in such work as rescue operations at sea, where many men owe their lives to the versatility of the whirlybird and the skill of the men who fly it. There are aircraft designed for all kinds of operations, under all kinds of conditions. Planes designed for landing on water. 
Planes designed for landing on snow. Planes with skis, the standard vehicle of pilots in the far north. Planes can carry on rescue work where other forms of transportation are out of commission due to flood, fire, or earthquake. Many times a rescue plane flying above the disaster area is the only way to get there with emergency supplies, the food and medicine necessary for survival. Small private planes also play a part in the picture. Flying businessmen and farmers rely on them for safe, swift transportation in their operations. Perhaps this private pilot is the only doctor in a large rural area. If so, the sound of his plane's engine overhead will be a note of hope and mercy to many an isolated farmhouse on his rounds. But transportation by air does not depend simply on planes in the sky. Behind every pilot aloft are hundreds of essential workers on the ground. It is men on the ground, the control tower operators, who govern the flow of arrivals and departures at an airport. With clockwork precision, these men and women in the towers bring the planes in and speed them off, ensuring that transportation by air will maintain its reputation for efficiency and dependability. These workers have helped to make flying one of the safest means of transportation. Other men on the ground, the mechanics and engineers, service the planes, keeping their engines at peak efficiency and the fuel tanks at capacity. The airline pilot is a man of skill and resources. Physically, mentally, and emotionally, he must meet the highest requirements before he is allowed to assume his responsibilities. Standing behind him are the aircraft manufacturers who have contributed to the meteoric rise of air transportation by their unstinting efforts to turn out better, faster, safer planes. Nobody interrupts a ball game when a train or car goes by, but transportation by air is still so fascinating that few of us can resist the temptation to look up toward the sound of engines overhead. The plane may be a passenger craft on a routine flight. It may be a military jet weaving a tight network of security over the nation. It may be a business plane transporting captains of industry. Or a small, sleek craft designed for relatively short hops. It could even be a winged mammoth coming in for a landing after carrying hundreds of passengers and tons of freight halfway around the world. Whatever its type, the ship you see today is only a hint of things to come. For aviation engineers, design for the future. And as their designs for tomorrow come off the drawing boards, transportation by air will assume a greater and greater share of our commerce. Today's destination may be anywhere on Earth. Tomorrow's will be outer space. <laughs>